you'd like to join the classes live in the masjid, then click on the link below. Inshallah, it will take you to a telegram group that has the details of all the class timings, the dates, the days, the addresses and the locations of the masjid. So click on that link and hopefully we'll see you there inshallah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. We stopped at the plains of the day of resurrection. The people are waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring them to account. But they have been told to wait. They have been told to stand this standing which is going to take place for X amount of time. The situation is not easy. The situation is very difficult. It's a hot day. People are sweating. They're confused and scared and horrified. The Prophet sallallahu told us that there's going to be a fountain in which the believers are going to drink from that when they drink from, they won't have any thirst ever again. What a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again. A day which is difficult. And one of the great things is, this fountain is the most suitable thing that could be given to the people as aid. If you was given food, you don't want food. If you're given clothes, you don't want clothes right now. Look, your people are naked, right? Isn't it right to say that people would want to at least cover themselves up? La la. Via Allah's mercies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to allow the believers to drink from the fountain of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Samra taqal, Samra he says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna li kulli nabiyin hawda. For every single prophet, there is a fountain. وَإِنَّهُمْ يَتَبَاهَوْنَ أَيُّهُمْ أَكْثَرُ وَارِدَةً And the prophets compete with one another to see who will have the most followers that arrive. وَإِنِّي أَرْجُوا and I hope أَنْ أَكُونَ أَكْثَرَ أَنْ أَكُونَ أَكْثَرَهُمْ وَارِدَةً And I hope I am the one that has the most followers who arrive. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described this fountain of his that the believers will drink from he gave descriptions of what it looks like in terms of length and width and also some of the descriptions that it has. The Messenger ﷺ said, <coughs> He says, Hawdi min adnin ila umman. My hold is from al adn or adn all the way to umman. In another hadith, he وسلم, said, It's min ayla. Ila Ad. Ayla is, of course, it's a city in Sham. So the first time he said, What? Where is it? What was the first place he said? Adam to Oman. The second time he said, Elia to, which is Sham basically, to where? Adam. The third time he said, It's between Medina, Medina in Saudi Arabia, was Sana. And Sana. Now there's three different ways he describes it to be, right? In terms of distance, yes? The ulama, they said, how do we reconcile between these three? Because they're all three different distances, yes? He was speaking to different people at each time. The people that he was speaking to, the distance that would have made sense to them according to what they understood of cities is what he gave to each one. But the main aim of him saying those cities is, it's very, very long. Does that make sense or not? Now something he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when he was describing it also is, that it's purer than laban, it's purer than milk. وَأَحْلَى مِنَ الْعَسَلِ And it's more sweet than honey. مَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ لَنْ يَظْمَعَ بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا Whomsoever drinks from it, we will never be thirsty ever again. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said something profound in another hadith narrated by Bukhari which tells us a group of people who will be prevented from drinking from it. Muslims. This is very, very, very important you listen to this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a hadith narrated by Imam Bukhari that 
there is a group of people who will be prevented from drinking from the fountain of the Messenger on this day where it's so needed thirst, humility, fear the sun is so close to you all you want is a cup of water on the authority of Sa'id al-Khudri he says the Messenger said لَيَرِدَنَّ عَلَيَّ أَقْوَامٌ أَعْرِفُهُمْ وَيَعْرِفُونَنِي ثُمَّ يُحَالُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ said, Some of my companions will come to me at the, at the mountain in the hereafter. Until I recognize them and they'll recognize me. I'm going to look at them and say, Oh, it's you. You're here. And then they're going to recognize likewise the Messenger ﷺ. However, what's going to happen is they will be taken away from this fountain. Abu Hazim, he says, فَسَمِعَنِي النُّعْمَانِ بْنُ أَبِي عَيَّاشٍ فَقَالْ هَكَذَا سَمِعْتُ بِبْنِ سَهْلٍ فَقُلْتُ نَعَمْ This is how I heard the hadith. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said and it's true. Because some of the companions were thinking, how is that possible? Who did the Prophet ﷺ say? Is going to be prevented from drinking it. Some of his what? Companions. Is that us? No. We also come under this, but he says some of his companions will be prevented from the hawk. They're going to come to drink from it, they'll be prevented, pushed away from it. So some of the companions who heard this hadith, they said, that doesn't make sense. How? It's a whole companion. So Numan, he says, this is how I heard it. The hadith, that's how I heard it. Then he says, the Prophet ﷺ continued and said, Ashabi, these are my prophets, these are my companions. How, are they, how is this happening to them? Ashabi, Ashabi, my companions, my companions. And he let them drink from it. Then it will be said to the Prophet ﷺ, إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا أَحْدَثُ بَعْدَكَ the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had died, right? He passed away in this life, right? He left for us a deen which was complete. He went through so much struggle and difficulty. Sleepless nights. Nights he was making dua for us. He worked so hard to bring this religion to us. A caller is going to call out and say to him when he realizes and says, how is this happening to my companions? What's the caller going to say? Oh Muhammad, you do not know what they came and brought into the religion. Once you passed away. Does the Messenger وسلم, know what happens after he passes away? No. For Ya Abdullah, O servant of Allah, when it comes to matters that are new in the religion, this word that we're all scared of, bid'ah, 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 wallahi, it's something big. It's not something easy. Yes, many people might make fun of this word, you know, in our century and our time, ah, oh, bid'ah, bid'ah, 24 7 bid'ah. The only thing that made the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that are going to recognize the Prophet and he's going to recognize them, they brought something new into your religion. Then it's going to be said to these people, Suhqan, 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 move away from this fountain. You're not going to come near it. Move away, move away. Another hadith which is very similar will be said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا بَدَّلُوا بَعْدَكَ you don't know what they changed in your religion when you died, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيُقَالُ لَهُمْ سُحْقًا سُحْقًا لِمَنْ بَدَّلَ دِينِي Far, take him away. The Prophet is going to make dua against him. Take him away. Move him away. Move him away. Move away the one who brought something new into my religion, the religion of Allah, when I passed away. Now they are the group of people along with oppressors, tyrant rulers and other people who are not going to drink from the fountain of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Wallahi it's a fountain we are all in need of it's a fountain that day we're not going to want anything else we're our families we're going to run away from our children we're going to run away from our friends ba'duhum li ba'din adu. friends are going to be enemies all you want as aid neither do you want food neither do you want clothing neither do you care about the house you left in the dunya you do not care this hold is going to come with, to your aid. Like you need to work hard for it whilst you're in the dunya. Whilst you're here, you don't get it. It's a virtue given to certain people. Iman and amal salih. 
Now the people are on these planes, they're there. It's been a long standing, maybe years, months, 20,000 years, 10,000 years. They're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. The aid of the hold of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the fountain has come. People are scared. Their legs are starting to pain. Their bodies are aching. Is there any sleep? No sleep. Everybody's standing waiting for the account to come. Now what the people do is the following. They request for an intercession. And the famous hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is in line with the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he said to the Prophet, Asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda. Perhaps your, your Lord, Allah Muhammad, will resurrect you in a praiseworthy station. The praiseworthy station which is spoken about is the intercession. al shafaatul uzma And inshallah, once I touch, about the, touch upon this shafa'a, at the end I'm going to touch upon the intercessions, the intercessions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Who is he going to make intercession for? Who is he not? Etc. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said On the authority of Ibn Ka'b إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ كُنْتُ إِمَامَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ وَصَاحِبُ شَفَاعَتِهِمْ غَيْرُ فَخْرٍ When the day of resurrection comes I'm going to be in front of the messengers, the lead of the messengers. And there's going to be me who comes to intercede for the people. And I'm not boasting. I.e. the Prophet is saying, it's not a boasting from me. Another evidence for the intercession is, the Prophet has said, whomsoever says the following when he hears the adhan, yani after the adhan, Allahumma rabba hadhihi da'wati tama wa salati al-qa'ima آتِ مُحَمَّدٍ الْوَصِيلَةَ وَالْفَضِيلَةَ وَبَعَثْهُ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا الَّذِي وَعَتَ There's an evidence to show there's a maqam mahmud, a praiseworthy station that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has been promised over others. What is this station of praise? What is this station of praise that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says? On the authority of Abu Hurairah, رضي الله عنه, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, أنا سيد الناس يوم القيامة وهل تدرون مما ذلك؟ I am the leader of the messengers on the day of resurrection. Do you know what's going to happen? The people are where right now? Where are the people? Where? Where are the people? They're on the plains of the day of resurrection. Are they standing or sitting? Standing. Has Allah come yet? No. They're just standing there waiting. Their feet are hurting. They don't know what's happening. They're just waiting for something to occur. Because of their feet hurting and how tired they are and the difficult, the sun is right here. They seek help. So the Prophet says, يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ فِي صَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ يُسْمِعُهُمُ الدَّاعِي Allah will gather every single person on the plains of the Day of Resurrection. And the sun will come close. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the following. He says, The people are going to mix in and in, in another. And just like we're doing now, they're going to be, and of course not exactly the same, but like somewhere which is very packed out, and they're all walking. They're going to go in and they're going to barge into each other. Barge in, barge in. Imagine Adam alayhi salam all the way until now how many people that is. Then he says, the people are going to say, they're going to go to Adam alayhi salam. فَيَقُولُونَ they will say to Adam, إِشْفَعْ لَنَا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكْ Intercede to your Lord for us. This standing is too long. Tell your Lord to come with the account. Then Adam is going to say, لَسْتُ لَهَا It is not for me to do that. وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِإِبْرَاهِيمٌ However, upon you is Ibrahim, so go to him. فَإِنَّهُ خَلِيلُ الرَّحْمَانِ For indeed, he's the friend of Allah. فَيَأْتُونَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ And they're gonna, then they're going to go to Ibrahim And they're going to say, oh, tell your Lord to bring the account because this standing is too long. Then he's going to reply and say, لَسْتُ لَهَا I am not one to do that. وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بُمُوسَى Go to Musa 
فَإِنَّهُ كَلِيمُ اللَّهِ Indeed, Allah spoke to him. Allah spoke to Musa directly. He has that virtue. Go to Musa and speak to Musa and say to him, intercede. Go and tell your Lord to bring the account. Then Musa alayhi salam is going to say, لَسْتُ لَهَا This is not for me to do. وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِإِيسَى Go to Isa alayhi salam. فَإِنَّهُ رُوحُ اللَّهِ وَكَلِمَتُهُ For indeed, he is the spirit of Allah and his word. فَيَأْتُونَ عِيسَى They will go to Isa. Then Isa is going to say, لَسْتُ لَهَا It is not for me. وَلَكِنْ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم. However, it's upon you to go to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَيَأْتُونِي Then they're going to come to me. The messenger is saying this. فَأَقُولُ أَنَا لَهَا He's going to say, yes, it's for me to do that. Because what did the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم know in the dunya? Which ayah came down to him? عَسَىٰ أَن يَبَعَكَ أَن يَبَعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُولًا Your Lord is going to what? Bring you to a praiseworthy station that no one else is going to be given. So he knew it. Then he's going to say, do the following. فَأَسْتَأْذِنُ عَلَىٰ رَبِّي I'm going to go and seek permission from my Lord. He's going to go to Allah and seek permission. فَيُؤْذَنُ لِي And then he's going to give me permission. وَيُلْهِمُنِي بِحَامِدٍ أَحْمَدُهُ بِهَا Allah is going to inspire me to praise him, a praising. لا تحضرني الآن I don't know right now what I'm going to say. What I'm going to say on that day, I don't know exactly what it is. Because Allah is going to inspire me to say it on that day. I'm not going to say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I'm going to say some sort of praising that I'm going to say. فَأَحْمَدُهُ بِتِلْكَ الْمَحَامِدِ وَأَخِرُّ لَهُ سَاجِدًا Then I'm going to praise him. And then I'm going to fall into prostration, prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when I fall into prostration, فَيَقُولُ Allah is going to say, يَا Muhammad, O Muhammad, إِرْفَعَ رأسك, Raise your head off the ground. وَقُلْ And say whatever you wish. يُسْمَعْ لك, You will be listened to. وَسَلْ And oh, ask, O Muhammad, تُعْطَى You will be given. وَشْفَعْ Intercede. تُشَفَعْ Your intercession will be accepted. فَيَقُولُ Then he's going to say, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ummati, O my Lord, my nation, my nation. This is the intercession which is going to bring the account forth. The intercession is done. What did the people wish? What were they wishing for? What did they want? They're standing all this time, long standing. Their feet are hurting. What's going on? They don't know. Jannah or Nar, who knows where they're going? Nobody knows. Imagine just waiting, waiting, waiting. The sun is here. The account is going to begin after this moment. But before that, something is going to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has He come yet? No. The next stage, the seventh stage is Maji'ullahi ma'al mala'ika. Allah is now going to come. Allah is going to descend in the, compa- in the accompanying of the angels and clouds. He's going to come. Because He is the one that's going to bring the people to account. A beautiful benefit which one of my mashayikh he mentioned is that the servant of Allah he should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because could Allah just get angels to bring people to account? Could Allah do that? Of course he can. Allah can do what he wishes. However, Allah is going to decide to physically himself come. So he can one by one interrogate you. He's not going to send his angels alone. La. His angels are going to give them jobs. That's why the angels are going to come down as well with Allah. We're going to look at evidences for them. Is the coming real coming? Is it an actual physical coming of Allah? Or is it His mercy that comes? Is it just His power that comes like some people believe? We're going to come into that inshaAllah ta'ala. Why is Allah going to come? What's the reason He's going to descend and attend the planes of the day of resurrection? That's all he wants to do. He just wants to give account to the people. He's not going to physically punish them. La, angels are going to do that. He's not going to necessarily put people into the hellfire. The angels are going to do that. He's going to say, chain them up, do this, do that. Allah is not going to do that himself. Lakin, he's going to come to bring the people to account, to separate the people, to question the people. Another benefit is. If the angels bring the people to account, what's, what are the people going to say? The angels are being unjust. 
The angels are not giving me my account properly. The angels forgot some of my actions. لكن الله سبحانه وتعالى لا يضل ربي ولا ينسى. The evidence for Allah coming is number one. كلا إذا دكت الأرض دكا دكا. And when the earth is destroyed, they destroy it. وجاء ربك أن your Lord comes. And the angels come. صفا صفا. So the angels are going to be in rows. And Allah is going to come. Second evidence. هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظُلَلٍ مِنَ الْغَمَامِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورُ Are the disbelievers of Quraysh waiting for the moment Allah comes for God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come with the angels in the shadow of clouds and then they are returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the matter is decided. Is that what they're waiting for? هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَوْ يَأْتِيَ رَبُّكُ Are they waiting for their angels to come? Or your Lord to come? Then they're going to believe? Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, there's going to be a light which comes with him. Yani the whole earth, which I described to you before, this flat plain, is going to be made full of Light. وَأَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ بِنُورِ رَبِّهَا وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ The earth is going to be light. Everywhere is going to be light. That's the moment people realize Allah is here. Because the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went where? To Isra Mi'raj. When he went to Allah. What did he say? He said, Nurun, Nurun. I saw light. So when people see this light, they realize, damn, Allah is here now. Allah has come. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ When is the day of resurrection? يَنْزِلُ اللَّهُ Allah will descend إِلَى الْعِبَادِ to the servants لِيُقْضَى بَيْنَهُمْ وَكُلُّ أُمَّةٍ جَهْتِيَا What were the people doing before? Sitting, standing, crawling, what were they doing? The moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, the people are going to fall flat on their hands. Shocked. Jathia, watara kulla ummatin jathia. Everyone's going to be jathia. And they're on their knees. Due to the fear they have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when this occurs, because Allah coming, my brothers and sisters, is something big. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if police officers came to you today and they were locking you up. Imagine if today you had a court. And you had to go to find out your results and you see the judge there. How scared would you be of him? Ta'ala Allahu Amma Yushrikun. Mathalu al-A'la. The best of parables is for Allah. Allah is more than a judge. But just imagine the Lord that we learnt of our whole lives, the one who loved us, who nurtured us, who looked after us, and he sent us messengers to give us Yani the true message of Islam told us your final abode will be this if you don't do this and your final abode will be this if you do this. And he provided for us. He looked after us in times of difficulty. He's the one who loves us. He heard everything we done. He knew of all of our matters. When we were in the darkness, nobody could see us doing sins, watching things on our phones. The one who knew all of this. He comes and the people are there ready for the account. This is the plains of the day of resurrection. There's going to be a people who try to run away. Musa alayhi salam to his people, he said, وَيَا قَوْمِ مَا بِيْبُوا إِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ يَوْمَ التَّنَادِ I fear for you the day of calling. يَوْمَ تُوَلُّونَ مُدْبِرِينَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عَاصِمْ The day which people, when Allah comes, they try to disperse and run away. When you turn around and you try to escape, you haven't realized مَا لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عَاصِمْ You don't have any place to escape. There's nowhere to go. Where are you going to escape from Allah? Now in the dunya you can escape. You can hide in cars. You can hide in your room. You can do etc. Where is the escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day? There's no escape whatsoever. That's the verse in Surah Al-Rahman Allah said when he was daring the people to show his authority and his yani, power. What did he say? يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ أَنْ تَنْفُذُوا مِنْ أَقَطَارِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فَانْفُذُوا 
O oh, jinn and mankind, if you have the ability to disperse from the earth, disperse, go, do it. You know one of the amazing things in the images I want to paint right now We have mountains, we have homes, cars. You know, the earth is not necessarily empty, right? Yes? People can hide in mountains, right or wrong? You need behind mountains, behind a car. You have a house, go behind the house in the alleyway. You can hide from people, right? How did we say the, the earth is going to be? يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضُ Be made into a different earth, right? What was the description I gave you guys? Flat. White. No houses, no cars, no traffic lights, nothing. When someone tries to run away and escape and he turns his back, where is he going to go? Nowhere to run. This is one of the wisdoms the scholars, they say why the earth is going to be made into a flat earth with nothing there. So they actually don't have anywhere to hide. Even if they were to try to hide, Allah can see them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see them. He's with you wherever you are. على كل حال الله رب العزة will come he's going to come he's going to present himself to the people he's going to present himself to the people there some people will see Allah some people won't see Allah the form in which people see Allah then will be different to the form they see him later Allah is going to have a veil he's not going to come and people will see him open لا he's going to have a veil but there will be nur and they will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there but they won't be able to see Allah Rabbul Izza. Allah is going to start questioning. Some of the questions which I managed to write down that will occur. There's other questionings that will occur as well. Like in the questioning, some of them, if we can get some images of what's going to happen when Allah comes and attends, Allah is not going to give you food to eat. He's not going to say, here, have this sip of water. La. Allah is not going to say to you, do righteous actions, one more chance. Allah is not going to speak to you about your wives and children and homes and wealth. La. Listen to these questions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ عَمَّا فَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ فَوَرَبِّكَ I swear by your Lord. I swear by Allah. Allah is swearing by who? Himself. لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ وَاللَّهِ we are going to ask and وَاللَّهِ we are going to ask and وَاللَّهِ we are going to ask هُمْ them أَجْمَعِينَ every single one of them we will question them regarding what عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ regarding that which they used to do the first question will be for the messengers Allah is going to go to the messengers and he's going to say to them فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِي أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ we are going to go to the messengers, question them. Those they were sent to, we're going to question them. وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُوا مَاذَا أَجَبْتُمُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The second questioning. What was the first questioning? Who's Allah going to question? The messengers. What's he going to say to them? Did you fulfill your job? Did you give the message to everyone? Did you make sure you've done what I told you to do? Did you, did you, did you? The messengers will answer correctly. Then Allah is going to go to the people and ask them likewise. ماذا أجبتم المرسلين? Look at this. Allah first asked the messengers, did you give the message? Yes, we did. Then he's going to go to the people and say, ماذا أجبتم المرسلين? How did you respond to the messengers? They told me that they gave you the message. The third question is going to be the questioning of the angels. What did Allah say? وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يَقُولُ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ أَهَاؤُلَاءِ إِيَّاكُمْ كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ Allah is going to go to the angels now. He's going to say there's a group of people that have been saying, yeah, we worship them, we used to worship them, etc. They told us this, etc. Did you tell them to worship yourselves? قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ Glory to be you, Allah. Anta waliyuna min dunihim. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are our wali, our protector, besides them. Bal kanu ya'budun al jinn. They used to worship jinn other than us. And we never told them to worship us. They thought they were worshipping us, but they were worshipping jinn. Wa yawma yahshuruhum, and when they are resurrected, 
Everything they used to worship other than Allah will also be resurrected. فَيَقُولُ They're going to say, the things that the people used to worship are going to say to Allah. Uh, they, they will also be questioned. They're going to say, who's going to say to who? Allah is going to say to who? No, no. Allah is going to say the fourth one. The idols that the people used to worship will be questioned. So the first Allah is going to question is the messengers. Did you fulfill your rights? Did you give the people the message? Number two, the people are going to be asked, the messengers, they said that yes, they have passed the message on. The third is going to be the angels. These people are saying that you told them to worship you. Did, did, did you tell them? No, we didn't. You are a protector of Allah. You are the one to be worshipped. They worship jinns, not us. The fourth group to be questioned are the people that... And the idols that were worshipped, the statues, the people, likewise the humans that were worshipped, they're going to be questioned and said the following to them. أَأَنْتُمْ أَضْلَلْتُمْ عِبَادِي هَؤُلَا أَمْ هُمْ ضَلُّ السَّبِيلِ Did you misguide my servants and tell them to worship you? Or are they the ones who misguided themselves? They're going to reply and say, سُبْحَانَكَ glory to be O Allah. مَا كَانَ يَنْبَغِي لَنَا أَنْ نَتَّخِذَ مِنْ دُونِكَ أَوْلِيَاءَ Oh Allah, it's not befitting for us to do that. How can we possibly do that? We just told them to worship you. The fifth person to be questioned is Isa alayhi salam. Allah is going, Allah is going to go to Isa alayhi salam. He's going to look for him within the people. Who's going to be there? The prophets. All children, boys, girls, Muslims, non-Muslims. Allah is going to pick out Isa alayhi salam from these millions and millions of people. He's going to say to Isa the following. Ya Isa, O Isa. A'anta qulta linnasi attakhidhuni wa ummiya ilahini min duni Allah. Isa, there's a group of people who are saying that you told them to take you and your mother as lords besides me. Did you say this to them? He's going to reply and say, Subhanaka, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, glory to be you. Ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaqqin. It's not befitting for me to say stuff I don't have a right to say. In kuntu qultuhu faqad alimtuhu. And if I truly said that to them, you would have known. Ta'lamu ma fi nafsi. You know what's in my heart, O oh Allah. Wa la a'lamu ma fi nafsik. I don't know what's in, within you, O oh Allah. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ You are the one who knows the unseen. How can I say that to them? It was not me. مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ I did not say to them. إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ Except that which you commanded me to say to them. أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ Except that I worship my Lord and your Lord. وَكُنْتُ أَنْ أَيْ عَلَيْكُمْ are upon you, O people, شَهِيدًا مَا دُمْتُ فِيهِمْ I'm going to be a witness. Whilst I'm in this world. Isa alayhi salam is free from the people. The messengers have given. And it takhayyil, imagine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some people are going to try to say, oh no, the messengers didn't come to us. This didn't happen. This man told me to worship him. This man told me to worship him. Has an account come yet? Has any account come? No. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put aside any excuses that might come. Isa didn't tell you to do this. Messengers gave the message. The account that's going to come, Allah is preparing the people for it. Those five groups of people are going to be spoken to. The Messenger وسلم, also told us, every single person on the face of this earth, Allah will speak to him. مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانِ Every single person will be spoken to by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no interpreter between them. No friend, no solicitor. There will be no one to help you at this court. There will be no one that's going to speak on your behalf. You don't need anybody that's going to speak for you. You and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah, what did Allah just do now? He wants to give an introduction, sir, right? Messengers, you gave your message? Yes, we did, O oh Allah. Oh, people who told you to worship other than Allah? Oh, they told us. Angels, did you tell them to worship other than Allah? No. 
Did you do the did you do the job correctly? Yes, we did, O oh Allah. Likewise, messengers, yes, we did, O oh Allah. The idols that were worshipped, did you tell them to worship you? No. How can we do that? We never requested that. They just worshipped us. What's Allah gonna say? اليوم تجزى كل نفس بما كسبت لا ظلم اليوم إن الله سريع الحساب. Well, in that case, today every single soul will be given their deeds, their actions, and nobody will, done, will be done unjustly whatsoever. Messengers gave their message, yes. They, no one else told you to worship anyone, yes. Well, today will be a day of justice. Wallahu yaqdi bil haqq. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will begin to bring the people to account. وَمَا تُجَزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ And you will not be given any deeds except that which you have done. From then onwards, people are going to try to start speaking. People are going to try to say, Ah, oh, but this person, where is he? Let me get that guy quickly. Oh, but Allah, this person done this, this person done that. هَذَا يَوْمُ لَا يَنْطِقُونَ وَلَا يُؤْذَنُ لَهُمْ فَيَعْتَذِرُونَ That day will be a day which you can't speak. There will be no excuses. You can't come with your excuses. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَاذِيرَهُ Even if this person throws around his excuses, today the account will be just. You will only be given the deeds you've been done that, that you have done, and you will not be done unjustly. Now that is the coming of Allah. Allah has now come. The angels likewise have come. The account is going to be brought forth for the people, and that's what Insha'Allah Taala we're going to speak about next. But the way I want to speak about it is I want to touch upon the account and give some principles pertaining to it. The account is of two types. Because a lot of us might be thinking, are the believers going to be interrogated? Are the believers going to be punished first? Because now we're in the account. Everybody's going to be told about their deeds. Is the accounting of the disbelievers the same as the accounting of the believers or not? Is it different? Is it the same? Are they going to be in a state of fear and horror, horror as well or not? And what is the difference between the account of the believers and the disbelievers, inshaAllah ta'ala, that I want to touch upon? So, the account is of two types. Number one is an easy account. And number two is a difficult account. The first one is an easy accounting, which is an accounting for the believers. With this accounting, there is no niqash, there's no uh, debating, yani, there's no interrogation. Allah is not going to say to you, why did you do this, and why did you do that, and why did you do this, and why did you do that? Who is that for? The believer who is upon the straight path, who committed sins, but he sought forgiveness, he prayed his salah, his zakah, he had ikhlas, he followed the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, etc, etc. He was salih. Mu'min, righteous believer. Now the evidence for that is the hadith of, the, of uh, Aisha radiallahu anha when she said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ أَحَدٌ يُحَاسَبُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِلَّا هلك. There's no one who's going to be brought to account on the day of resurrection except he will be destroyed. It will be the form of his destruction. Are the believers going to be in destruction on that day? No. So this for them is going to be an account which is different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا A easy account. Now Aisha رضي الله عنها, she says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, how is it that people are going to be brought to an account? How can there be a good, a, a easy account, a hard account? Account means what? You're going to be brought forth and you're going to face the consequences of deeds, right? How is that for the believer then? If he's been forgiven his sins and his final abode is Jannah, how does that go together? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكَ الْعَرْضُ وَلَيْسَ أَحَدٌ يُنَاقَشُ الْحِسَابَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِلَّا عُذِّبُ This is not going to be a, a proper account. He's just going to be given his deeds and he's going to be shown his deeds. Now listen to this hadith. The account of the believer, my brothers, and I want us to really, really, really listen to this hadith because once you hear it, not all of us are going to be given this. When I say not all of us, I mean not every single believer will be given it. 
The other believer who is a sinner is going to be given the account of the disbeliever. Harshness, interrogation. Where was you in this day? Look at, look at this act you've done. Why did you do it? Why did you not seek forgiveness? Etc, etc. The believer who was righteous, he worked hard to stay away from sins, prayed his salah, and he was righteous. And I keep saying he was righteous, but he'd done sins, because we're all sinners. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, all, yani, all sons of Adam are sinners. However, the best of sinners are, those who repent. So listen to this hadith. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is going to conclude the accounting of the believer. This is what he's going to be given. Then he moves on to the next stage of the day of resurrection. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhuma, Sami'tu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaqul, I heard the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Inna Allah yudni al-mu'mina fayada'u alayhi kanafa wayasturuhu fayaqul Allah is going to call the believing servant close to him. He's going to say, come here, O Muhammad, O Abdurrahman, come, come. He's going to bring him close so people can't see. Just him and Allah. He's going to cover him up. Then Allah is going to show him his deeds. Then this person is going to be given all of the sins he done. The address he done it at, the day he done it, the date, who he was with, if other people told him to do it or not. One by one, by one, by one, Allah is going to bring out his deeds. فَيَقُولُ Then Allah says, أَتَعْرِفُ ذَنْبَ كَذَا وَكَذَا Do you remember so-and-so deed that day at this place? أَتَعْرِفُ ذَنْبَ كَذَا وَكَذَا Do you remember this one as well? Do you remember that one that you did that day? فَيَقُولُ Then this person is going to reply and say, نَعَمْ أَيْ رَبْ Yes, oh Allah, I remember this. I remember that sin I done, oh Allah. حَتَّى إِذَا قَرَّرَهُ بِذُنُوبِهِ Until he admits his sins. He says, yes, Allah, i done this. Allah, i done this as well, Allah. Allah, I hope I was weak and I had a bad iman, I had low iman that day. I remember that one, yes. i done this as well. Oh, Allah, yes, i done this. وَرَأَى فِي نَفْسِي أَنَّهُ halak. This believer is then going to think to himself, oh my God, how? And I am completely finished. Destruction for me. All of these sins, how am I even going to be saved? Because he's admitting them as well. Imagine you're at a court. And then they say, was it not you that day? And then they show you a video of you doing something. They have evidences. Is that not you? What do you have in your mind? I've got a death sentence. Murder. 25 years. I'm, I say, I actually have no chance. So this believer is going to admit his sins and say, yes, oh Allah, I've done this and I've done that and I've done this and I've done that. Until he feels as though he has no hope. And he's going to enter the whole fire, final abode. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, سَتَرْتُهَا عَلَيْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَأَنَا أَغْفِرُهَا لَكَ الْيَوْمِ I am the one, O oh my servant, who covered it up for you in the dunya. You've done all of these sins, but I covered them up for you. Just like I covered them up for you in the dunya, I forgive you for the sins here. فَيُعْطَى كِتَابَ حَسَنَاتِهِ Then a book is going to be brought forth with his good deeds. And then he's going to look at his good deeds and he's going to start to feel good. He's going to have some sort of hope. That is the accounting of the true believer. The accounting of who? The true believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from them. And I really say this because we all have sins. We all have sins. We all have sins. Imagine Allah's mercy. He's coming to you and saying, look, he's not even telling, he's not even bringing you to account in front of everyone. He's taking you to a corner. I covered you up. No one can see you. He just says, look, admit everything. I will let you off. Just admit it. Did you do this that day? Yes. You thought I couldn't see it. You was with these people, right? Yes. Oh, Allah. I forgive. Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah. I'm going to forgive you for it. Khalas. No problem. Now, the disbeliever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he described this person's, person's account to be different. It's as follows. Allah said, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ They're going to be brought forth in front of their Lord. To stand up and stand, don't move. قَالَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring his scrolls. قَالَ Allah is going to say, أَلَيْسَ هَذَا بِالْحَقِّ 
before I even show you anything, is this not true now? You can see everything. This plane you're here at, you denied it before. You said there's no hellfire, there's no Jannah, there's no resurrection. First of all, Alaysa Hadha Bil Haq. Have you come to the realization that I'm gonna bring you to account? They're gonna reply and say, Qalu bala wa rabbina. Wallahi our Lord is true. The accounting is true, O oh Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fawarabbika lanas alannahum ajma'in. We're gonna question all of them about their sins. أَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Regarding that which they used to do. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah is going to do something which is going to horrify them. Is a disbeliever going to admit his sins? No. He's going to be there thinking, I can't say what I've done. Because what's the biggest thing the disbeliever done? Shirk. He worshipped other than Allah. There's no way he's going to admit that. In fact, in another place Allah says... Wallahi Rabbina, our Lord, we swear by Allah. We didn't worship these people. Do you know what Allah replies? Look at how they're trying to lie to their Lord. Can you lie to Allah? You can't lie to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that because they're not admitting their sins, just like the believer did, اليوم نختم على أفواههم We're going to Seal their mouths. They're not going to be able to speak. وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ And their hands are going to start to speak. وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ And their feet are likewise going to testify against them. انتبه Listen to this. Is this only the disbeliever? No. The believer who was a sinning, constant sinner, heedless, ghafil, fasiq, mujrim, who didn't seek forgiveness, he comes under this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that when these people's hands, they testify against him and their mouths are sealed, will be said to them, sorry, they're going to say, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا They're not going to say this from their mouths, but they're going to say it within their minds. Oh, our Limbs, why are you testifying against us? Why are you speaking for? قالوا, their limbs are going to reply and say, أَنْتَقَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْتَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Allah, the one who makes everything speak, is making us speak as well. Every single limb that they done sins with will begin to speak. He done this with me, with his hands, he stole this, with his eyes, oh, he used his eyes where he looked at this, X, Y, and Z. His feet he used to go to this place and this place. His private parts will speak and will say he used me to in haram. Everything he done, even the heart will speak. Which actions does the person do with his heart? Father than Allah. What sins can someone do with his heart? Huh? Loud? Arrogance? Hey? Hasad? What else? Tawakkul for other than Allah will be mentioned. If someone has tawakkul upon other than Allah and fear for other than Allah, is that not a sin? His heart will say all of this stuff. These people will be made to stand. The first person to be questioned, when I say questioned, I mean the first person to experience the account is who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that I am the one to be brought to account first. The account of the messengers will come onto it as well. How is the accounting of the messengers? Are they questioned about stuff they've done? Are they only told there's a hellfire or not? Is their final abode already mentioned, etc.? We'll come onto that as well, insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah Rabbul Izzah, he said, when he was giving general descriptions of this hisab, people will be scattered around to see their deeds. A mustard seed of good, you'll see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهِ A mustard seed of bad deeds, you'll see it. وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى ثُمَّ يُجَزَاهُ الْجَزَاءُ الْأَوْفَى Everyone will be brought forth and they will only be given that which they've done. The hard work, they will see it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us that the actions 
will physically be brought forth. This hisab, it has something called ardul a'mal. Ardul a'mal is the presenting of the deeds in the form of actual deeds. Look at this. يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا The day which every single person will see the deeds that they used to do right in front of them. Zina, riba, all of them, you'll see them. SubhanAllah, is that what I done? Is that, was that actually the thing which I took part in? Something great which I want to also allude on to inshaAllah and we'll stop there for Salatul Isha is the deeds that the people are going to be shown and questioned regarding the bad deeds that we've done will be shown. There won't be any bad deeds that we missed out whatsoever. The good deeds we're going to see have been multiplied. The mercy of Allah. My brothers, do you really think I, a Lord who wants to multiply your deeds today, just so he can show you multiply deeds, but the deeds that are bad, he keeps them like that. But he actually says, I'll forgive you for them if you repent. And any ones that you thought of doing and you didn't do, I won't even bring them on the day of resurrection. Do you not think he's willing to forgive you as well? Do you also not think that he deserves to be worshipped whilst we're here? Do you not likewise realize that you need to stop sinning? We need to stop sinning. Even stuff we think about. I want to go commit zina. You haven't done it. It won't be written. However, you thought of going to Salatul Jama'ah, you thought of, you know, I want to pray Isha in the masjid. You didn't do it. You'll be rewarded for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Man ja'a bil hasanati falahu wa ashwa amthaliha. One salah times by ten. You prayed one maghrib on Friday, on Sunday, the second of, of, uh, of January 2022. You'll see ten salahs you prayed. The bad is you won't see them like that, however. وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجَزَ الَّذِينَ فَلَا يُجَزَ إِلَّا بِمِثْلِهَا However, the bad deeds, they won't be given except according to the bad deeds itself. One bad deed, no problem, one. Here it is, etc. This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hisab I want to conclude, an عَرْضُ amal. The books have not been given. Have the books been given yet? No. The disbelievers, they've been brought forward. Why did you do this on that day? Why did you do that on that day? There's going to be debates. Oh Allah, i never done this. i never done that, etc. They'll debate and try to speak, etc. And then their hands, their limbs will testify against them. The book hasn't been given yet. The final word has not been mentioned. However, the believer, come here, Muhammad. Ismail, Jibreel, Abdullah, come here. Ibrahim, Abdul Adud, come here. Did you do this? Yes, oh Allah, i done it. Did you do this as well? Yes, oh Allah, I done it. Did you do this? Yes, Allah, I done it. Allah, I done it. I was, it was wrong. I know it was wrong. I covered it up for you on that day. Today, I'll forgive you for it. May Allah make us from them. We'll conclude, inshaAllah ta'ala, the presenting of deeds like that. And likewise, the accounting of the disbeliever and the believer. The accounting, there's two accounts. The first accounting, and it's important we understand this, because we always hear the day of account the day of resurrection, all of this stuff. There's two types of account. The first one was the one I just told you, which was, here's your deeds. Why did you do them and why did you not do them? And all believers, here's your deeds. You accepted them, I forgive you for it. What was in that type of accounting though? There was debate and arguments, right? Allah, I never, Allah, come on, how could you do this, etc. There's going to be debates. And then I was going to say, look, there's no debate in today. There's no question. There's no, don't come with excuses. Next is going to be the giving of the books and a second hisab. That is the true hisab. The true hisab, the books are there. You'll be given them and you're going to be told to read them. And then there's no debating. The first one, there was some, throw around your excuses. Try to also uh, يعني, explain and justify why you committed zina. They will try to justify. Allah had done it because of this. Oh Allah, my friend brought me here. Oh Allah, whatever. That's the first account. So it's important you understand that. The first account, there's going to be this discourse of, I done it because of this. It was not my fault. This guy told me to do it. Oh Allah, this guy told me to do it. Ah, etc. 
But the next one, however, there won't be any discussions or anything like that, which we'll inshallah touch upon next. Anything which I have said which is corrected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything wrong or a mistake or slip of the tongue from Allah is, is, is from me, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it.